I'm Sherry and this is Gardening in the North. Today I'm going to be planting my garlic and I thought that I would share with you how I'm going to be amending the, the garden space and to explain to you what the difference is between hard neck and soft neck gar garlic. As well, I wanted to share an experiment with you that I'm going to be doing with onions. I don't know if you fell into a similar situation that I was in, but I was waiting for my local nursery to get in their garlic. So last year I planted garlic and it did not do well and it really none of it was salvageable for this year. So I actually had to purchase all new garlic so that I can start again. Now I purchased a lot of garlic and the reason that I did that is so that next year I can have garlic to use and process, as well as garlic to replant for the next year. And so I'm hoping that with all of the garlic that I have right now, I should have roughly 450 cloves to plant. Now, I will count them once I've pulled all of the cloves apart to see how many I have because I journal everything. And I, I've mentioned that in other videos that I like to journal how many plants, how many, just everything, you know, and then what do I get from those plants so that I can then make note to say to myself, okay, like you had, you know, way too many garlics or you didn't have enough. And then I know what I need to do the next year and I learn from that. So these garlic, these bags of garlic here that I have, so I have the red German and I have the music garlic. All of these garlic heads are hard neck. And the way you can tell that is when you pull apart your heads and you see that white neck in there, that's the hard neck, okay? So that's how you know. So what should happen when you plant these is that the nice green stalks that come up from your garlic are gonna be nice and hard and they're gonna stand up really nice. Now. I was waiting for all of this garlic to come in at my local nursery and it was weeks behind schedule. I kept stopping in, they kept telling me that they didn't have it yet and that it was, you know, on its way. And so I panicked a little bit and went to the local grocery store and actually bought some um, organic garlic. Now the organic garlic that I purchased is soft neck. It doesn't have that nice hard neck. And so what that means is that this garlic here will not have the nice big green shoots that come up. They won't last as long standing up and they will fall over. So I have a couple different areas where I'm gonna plant the different garlics and I will plant the soft neck garlic in areas where it doesn't matter if they, they fall over. Whereas the hard neck garlic looks really nice when it's standing up and then you get the nice little garlic scapes that come from it. So I'll probably plant this where, you know, when I look at my kitchen window, I can see it. So I'm gonna pull all this apart, count them up, and then I'll bring you back and let you know how many I have. I'm gonna do an experiment today with my onions. And I'm gonna plant one or two bags of Spanish onions. Same kind of onions that I would plant in the springtime but I'm gonna plant them in the fall. And the reason I'm gonna do this is I wanna see a comparison between my fall onions and my spring onions to see which ones grow larger, which ones taste sweeter. So I have two raised beds out in my garden right now and they are beside each other. They're gonna get the exact same amount of sunlight. So I'm gonna fill one of them today and then in the springtime, I'll fill the second one and then I'll bring you back at the end of the season to show you what has come from that experiment. So it smells amazing in here. All I can smell is garlic. And if you're like me, just the raw garlic smells good. Never mind if you were to cook with it. So I purchased this here from Metro. And it is, let me see here. 
So it's processed, pack, packaged in Montreal, um, but it's a product of Argentina. Now, a couple things I noticed, some of it is white garlic, some of it is purple. The purple ones are hard neck, and these white ones are soft neck and they all came out of the same package. So I found that to be very interesting. The other thing that I found interesting is that the red German garlic compared to the music garlic, look at the differences between them. The music garlic is double the size of the red German garlic. Now the red German garlic is supposed to have a really nice spicy flavor to it. So I'm really excited about them. Now I have pulled apart all of the music garlic um, and I have 266 cloves that I'm going to plant. I have also pulled apart all of my red German garlic and I have 279 to plant. I'm still going through some more of my organic, so I will let you know what the total number is once I'm done. But like everything that I do in life, I have definitely gone overboard with how much garlic I'm actually going to need to plant. <laughs> I'll see you in a bit. In total, I have 759 garlic cloves that I can potentially plant. So I'm outside right now. I'm gonna start amending some of the areas that I had planned to plant my garlic in and just kind of see how far I get with them and determine whether or not I need to maybe take some of the other raised beds that I you know, have empty right now that I would normally use for something in the spring and plant my garlic in it. So 759, it is a bit extreme, I will agree. So. You know, everyone out there who's, uh, who's about to judge me for having so many, judge away because I'm judging myself as well. Um, I thought I would end up with about 500. I didn't anticipate some of the garlic heads having so many cloves in them. Um, some of the ones that I had only had four or five and I was kind of gauging how many heads I bought based on, you know, getting five cloves from each one. So. Having said that, I'm just going to start planting and see where I end up. One of the things I do want to do next year with a lot of my garlic is I want to dehydrate them and make garlic powder out of it. It is so nice having homemade garlic powder. I've been using homemade onion powder for the past couple of months now and it is amazing. The taste, the smell, everything you get from making it yourself is a hundred times better than what you would buy in the stores. So I will do that. I'm, I'm hoping that maybe if I can plant all of the garlic, then maybe what I'll do is I'll make up jars of homemade garlic powder and give it as gifts. So I mean, who doesn't like garlic no matter how you get it, right? So I'm going to start amending some of the areas, pulling out some of the old tomato plants that I haven't pulled out yet, adding in um, mushroom compost, and then I'll plant the garlic about four inches apart from each other, and then I'll lightly cover it back over with some wood chips and just let the magic happen until next year. One thing I wanted to show you though, behind me here, I don't know if you can see it, is my black walnut tree. Tons of black walnuts on the ground over there. I don't know if anybody has any suggestions on what I could do with them, but if you do have some suggestions for the walnuts that fall off of that gorgeous tree, please let me know. Okay, so this area here is right beside our pool fence. And this year I had tomato plants growing here and I just felt like it looked really messy. And I didn't really like the look of it from the pool area. So I think I'm going to plant my hardneck garlic here because I think that the shoots and the stalks, the nice greenery you'll get, and then all of the garlic scapes will look really nice up against this fence. 
and maybe kind of take away from the fact that we have to have the fence there for bylaw purposes. So I'm going to start pulling back some of this wood chips and like I said, I'm going to add in some mushroom compost and then um, I'm actually going to use, this is a sunflower stalk and I'm actually going to lay it down once I'm ready and kind of use it as my guideline for planting my garlic in fairly straight rows so that I utilize this space as best I can. So stay with me and um, let's see how many garlic I can plant in this area here. Okay, so I've used my sunflower stock to imprint on the new compost that I've just added to this area. Just so I kind of know where the lines are, what lines to follow. I'm now going to start planting my garlic. And one of the things I wanted to point out is you always do the point side facing up. And the, the root side, so if you were to look, this one's dirty let me see this end faces down so pointy end up flat side down okay and you're just going to stick it in there and then lightly cover over it and that's it so one of the things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put all my garlic in first then lightly cover over top and then put my mulch on top Hey guys, so I was able to plant 500 garlic so far. I still have another space that I was anticipating planting my garlic, so I'm not doing too bad. I figure I will use the last space that I was planning on using and then whatever garlic I have left over, any garlic cloves I have left over, I'm actually gonna throw them in my dehydrator and just make homemade uh, garlic powder from them. Because at that point, I think um, anything above 500 is a little crazy. Anyways, it's getting dark and uh, I'm pretty tired. I planted 20 of the Spanish onions. Once I got out here and started, you know, feeling the, the onions, I just felt like they were a little bit soft and I didn't think that it was going to be a very good experiment if I used something that wasn't going to be the quality of the ones I'm going to be using in the spring. So basically what I did is I just pulled out the best 20 from that bag that I thought were really good and I planted them in one of the raised beds. And so in the spring, I will plant another 20 in the exact same bed so that everything is exactly the same. And then we will uh, monitor it and see how it goes. So I'm going to head in now, have some dinner, and uh, finish off the, the last little bit of garlic tomorrow. But I got 500 planted today. Thanks for sharing your time with me.